Sup, Chooms, how y'all living? Hope everything is Nova and you're all having a preem week. So, if you've ever gone online and disclosed that you use Finasteride, chances are you'll eventually run into some internet tough guys who will try to take their bald cell frustrations out on you by insulting you for it. The insults you hear are the stereotypical trite and tired ad hominem attacks from the alt-right lexicon we've all been hearing from every neckbearded loser since Gamergate. Cuck, soy boy, new male, you all know what I'm talking about, and that is no surprise as there is a strong overlap with anti-finasteride and alt-right communities. Alt-right neckbeards when they're not busy crying into their anime waifu body pillows about woke Disney movies and Brie Larson tweets are desperately trying to use finasteride's popularity to convince the masses that the normalization of suppressing DHT, a hormone that they think is essential for male virility, is proof that masculinity is under attack from woke SJWs. This of course is all complete BS as DHT is a trash hormone that doesn't have any important roles past puberty. Testosterone is the real main male hormone, and finasteride actually raises testosterone levels, so with finasteride, you get the best of both worlds. It raises the hormone that makes us men, while suppressing the shitty old man trash hormone that makes women's thumbs tired from left swiping so hard. Bald cell internet tough guys know that the scientific evidence isn't on their side, so they're hoping they can bully other people into rejecting finasteride by claiming that its usage is an affront to masculinity, and one of the ways they do this is by describing finasteride as a tranny drug. The word tranny is, of course, a pejorative term used to denigrate transgendered people, and I don't personally condone the usage of that word myself. I'm just bringing it up because that is how finasteride is attacked by online alt-right conspiracy theorist communities in the modern-day digital era. Now, of course, I am aware of the fact that transgendered people are currently a focal point of a cringy and autistic culture war, especially in the United States, and I have no interest in fanning the flames of that situation, as I know there are strong emotions on both sides. Honestly, I am a bit afraid to post this video because of the politics behind transgendered subjects, but this channel is meant as a safe space for everybody who is interested in learning about hair loss. I know I also have some transgendered viewers, so please, regardless of your views on the politics behind this subjects, let's not be assholes to each other and understand that we're all in this fight together to defeat the slap head curse. But one still has to wonder, how did finasteride develop a reputation as a tranny drug? Pejoratives and childish name calling aside, when one hears the words tranny drug, what usually comes to mind are pharmaceuticals that transgendered people use to transition into a gender that better conforms to their identity. So in men who went to transition into women, that would mean a combination of drugs that raise estrogen levels while suppressing their body's natural production of testosterone. So drugs that could be more accurately defined as tranny drugs would be hormones like estradiol, which is a form of estrogen, as well as oral spironolactone, which is an androgen receptor antagonist that also lowers testosterone levels and has an estrogenic effect on the body as well. Topical spironolactone, it's worth mentioning, has been used as a weak adjunctive therapy for hair loss, but that's another subject and I have a video about that which I'll link below if you're interested. But it makes me wonder, are 5-AR inhibiting drugs like finasteride ever used by trans people? If so, why would they use them and why would DHT, which is merely just a paracrine hormone that is active only on the scalp and the prostate be an important hormone for them to suppress in their transition. Also, why would a male to female trans woman even need finasteride? You'd think with all the testosterone they're suppressing, there probably wouldn't be enough testosterone to convert into DHT to begin with, right? Also, we already know that estrogen by itself is a very powerful hair growth agonist. There is even a subreddit called Trans Timelines where you see pictures of people post before and after pictures of themselves before and after they transition. And in the case of male to female trans women, you can often see remarkable hair regrowth. But it turns out many trans women do take finasteride during their transition, and oftentimes this is even recommended to them by their doctor. So why would they do this? Could it be that the terminally online Gamergate rejects are correct and that finasteride really is a tranny drug as they describe? Well, in the case of female to male trans men, finasteride usage makes a lot more sense since they're taking testosterone exogenously and you'd expect many of them would want to stop hair loss just like people who were born male. But gender aside, androgenic alopecia is a genetic condition. That means that both men and women carry the genes that cause androgenic alopecia. Despite the fact that women carry the genes and pass them along to their children, it is men who most commonly develop hair loss, and that's because men have higher levels of the trash hormone DHT that destroys our hair follicles, amongst many other negative things. Men also have lower levels of estrogen, which has a protective effect on hair growth. Now, of course, 
I'm not saying that women don't get androgenic alopecia. I've even made videos dedicated to women fighting hair loss, and I'll link one of them below. But the fact of the matter is, is that hair loss is just more common and a lot more aggressive in men than it is in women. So clearly, female to male trans men who take finasteride are going to frequently end up with androgenic alopecia because their DHT levels are going to rise exponentially. So even though taking finasteride has nothing to do with the process of female to male transitioning, it is often recommended to be used to treat hair loss in these people. In fact, we even have Dr. Michael Earwig of all people recommending finasteride in this group, which is especially surprising since Dr. Earwig is one of the most anti-finasteride doctors on the planet, not to mention a recurring villain in the Hair Cafe cinematic universe along with Dr. Trash. In this article here, Dr. Earwig looks at the role of 5 air blockers in both trans men and trans women. We'll talk about using finasteride for trans women in a moment, but getting to the research here, it turns out Dr. Earwig is skeptical about using 5 air blockers in trans women, but he does say that there is a stronger case to be made for using finasteride in trans men simply to avoid androgenic alopecia. The only hesitation that he has is that he speculates that blocking DHT might reduce the growth of the clitoris that some trans men desire to enlarge. He also notes that DHT may help with the development of body hair, including beard hair, which develops more slowly while taking anti-androgens. So he suggests delaying the starting of 5-air inhibitors until body hair develops, which may take up to a year after starting testosterone. It turns out that there are a few studies of using finasteride for treating androgenic alopecia specifically in trans men. And as expected, it works just like it does in biological cisgendered men and is a very effective treatment for stopping hair loss. Here's one of the studies. It is a small study of just 10 female to male trans men who develop typical male pattern androgenic alopecia after transitioning. It is interesting that none of them had any hair loss before transitioning, but 70% of them had a family history of hair loss. Their hair loss started on average three and a half years after starting testosterone therapy. As you can see in these photos, the pattern was a typical male hair loss pattern that we see in the Hamilton Norwood scale, and not the more diffuse pattern that is seen in female pattern hair loss, though both patterns are due to androgenic alopecia, and I'll go ahead and link my video on diffuse thinning that I made recently below. The top two pictures are before finasteride, and the bottom two pictures are after 12 months of finasteride use. Clearly, there appears to be an improvement after using finasteride. So in the study, all the subjects started out with Norwood Hamilton grade 4 hair loss, except for one subject who was a Norwood 3. After an average of 5.5 months of treatment with finasteride at 1 milligram per day, all the subjects improved by one Norwood grade, which is really not all that shabby. However, three subjects ended up stopping finasteride, two of them for reasons of the cost of the drug, and one because the drug upset his stomach. In those three subjects, all the finasteride gains were lost after between three and six months, which gives you an idea about how long you could safely stop finasteride without losing any ground. So if you have to stop it for a couple of weeks, that's obviously no big deal. It's also important that the investigators saw no effect of finasteride on body hair growth, which is the thing that Dr. Earwig was worried about. This might be because finasteride was started on the average about three and a half years after transitioning. So while DHT may be an important hormone for establishing a beard, beards are maintained just fine by testosterone alone. I talk about that more in my video on DHT and beard growth that I'll link below. Anyways, this is just a small study that we're talking about here, but there are other studies on using 5-air inhibitors in trans men, which I'll link below in case you want to review them for yourself. But the bottom line, though, is that what finasteride is used for in trans men is exactly what it is used for in biological men, meaning the drug is used to treat androgenic alopecia, which is seen in about 45% of trans men, so it is pretty much just as common as it is in biological men. The treatment for androgenic alopecia in trans men is the same as in biological men, 5 air blockers and a growth stimulant, meaning either finasteride or dutasteride and topical minoxidil. So finasteride and dutasteride are not given to female to male trans men for any specific transitioning effects, but this brings us to male to female trans women, which is probably what most people are concerned about. So are 5 air blocking drugs used in male to female trans women? And if so, then does that mean that drugs like finasteride and dutasteride have feminizing effects on men? For male to female trans women, various forms of estrogen are used along with anti-androgens like high-dose spironolactone and cyproterone acetate, which actually isn't available in the United States. GnRH modulators, which basically shut down the production of sex hormones altogether, are also sometimes used, but they are extremely expensive. So, 
Contrary to popular belief, finasteride is not routinely added to these feminizing drug stacks. Its prescription to trans women is not common at all, but it is used sometimes. So to find out why exactly, let's see what our good friend Dr. Earwig has to say about all this. He notes that some practitioners do use finasteride. It gives an example of one clinic in which 30% of trans women are in fact on finasteride. The reason for this? Well, it comes down to hair again, but this time we're not talking about scalp hair. We're talking about body hair. Men transitioning into women want to lose their beard and their body hair. Beard and body hair development during puberty is dependent on DHT, but like I said before, once beard and body hair develops, it is maintained by testosterone. So if you were taking an anti-androgen drug, why would blocking DHT do anything further? Well, the rationale is based on studies like this one here. Finasteride at a dose of 5 milligrams per day has been used in the past to treat women with hirsutism, meaning excessive body hair growth. These women, however, have hirsutism because they have excessive androgens. So blocking androgens by any means can treat hirsutism. In fact, in the study, it turns out that finasteride, which specifically lowers DHT, and spironolactone, which lowers testosterone, were equally effective in treating hirsutism in women. So getting rid of unwanted body hair is one of the reasons doctors have use finasteride specifically in trans women. But it turns out Dr. Earwig is actually skeptical of it for this usage. He says, quote, despite its use in trans feminine individuals, it is unclear that lowering DHT levels with finasteride will have any additive clinical benefit once testosterone levels have already been lowered, unquote. In fact, using finasteride in trans women can actually be counterproductive because as Dr. Earwig correctly points out, finasteride actually increases serum testosterone testosterone levels. This is because when the 5-air enzyme is blocked, testosterone can no longer be converted into DHT and testosterone levels will consequently go up. To back this up, Dr. Irwig quotes a study of 49 trans women patients who had a mean increase of total testosterone levels of 92 nanograms per deciliter. This occurs in men taking finasteride as well, where the serum testosterone rise is on average about 10% while on the drug. So rather than being a tranny feminizing drug, using finasteride can actually backfire for trans women and cause unwanted masculinization in male to female trans women. Also, as it turns out, even using finasteride finasteride to treat pre-existing androgenic alopecia in male to female trans women, it may actually be unnecessary. Dr. Earwig argues that just estrogens and anti-androgens alone should be more than enough in most cases to completely crush DHT levels. He gives an example of a case report of a 33-year-old transgender female who had remarkable regrowth of scalp hair after a six-month course of estradiol and spironolactone. So, to sum all this research up, in female to male trans men, finasteride is used to treat androgenic alopecia, which happens at about the same frequency as it does in biological cisgendered males. It is not taken to have any effect on transitioning. In male to female trans women, finasteride is sometimes used, but the rationale is not supported by any scientific evidence. It is supposed to decrease body hair growth, but estrogens and anti-androgens are probably sufficient enough to do that by themselves. It may be used to stimulate scalp hair growth, but once again, estrogen Androgens and anti-androgens are probably sufficient enough to do that, and finasteride should only be prescribed to trans women who have extremely aggressive androgenic alopecia. But if possible, trans women should avoid finasteride because if anything, finasteride can cause virilization due to finasteride's effect on increasing serum testosterone levels. So anyone who claims finasteride is a tranny drug is a fucking moron and a liar because finasteride is not used to transition at all, and if anything, it may may make transitioning into a woman more difficult since it raises testosterone levels, and testosterone is of course the main male hormone. So when you hear people tell you that finasteride is a tranny drug, ignore them. They're just trying to bully you into feeling insecure about your masculinity since they're angry that you are refusing to join them in their bald misery. The reason they're making fun of you for taking finasteride is because they're jealous that you still have your hair, and they on the other hand are stuck with a shade ring of hair around their scalp in the shape of a toilet seat for the rest of their lives because unlike you, they didn't have the grit, guts, or balls to do what needed to be done to save their hair. And that is because they are lacking the most masculine, the most alpha, the most valorous trait a man could possibly have. Courage. Thank you for watching Hair Loss Witchers. I'll see you all next time. God bless.